angel of the Lord appears on the hills of Bethlehem to shepherds who were tending the sheep. And the angel announced this in Luke 2, 11, says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about the need for a Savior. Why in the world would I need a Savior? Why would you need a Savior? Now these shepherds had heard all their lives about a Messiah, a Savior who God would send to deliver them from their sins. Now Noah Webster defines Savior as one who saves, preserves, or delivers from destruction or danger. Specifically, a Savior, he who brings salvation to men, Jesus Christ the Redeemer. Now and the inherent in the word Savior is, is a, a foreboding, a sense that something is dreadful that you need saved from. Don't that make sense? And the prophets had foretold of a coming Savior for generations, the Messiah of God, the Lord. When he spoke to that woman at the well, she said, We know that Messiah is coming. We know that the Messiah is coming. Jesus said, I'm the one, I'm him. It's me. It's him. The prophet Isaiah said, Tell ye, and bring them near. Let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. Isaiah 43, 11, God told the prophet Isaiah, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Now some may look at this story and ask, why would someone, why would you, why would I need a Savior? And I mentioned the very term, Savior itself, gives the inference that there's something bad, something ominous, something foreboding, and something awful that is about to happen unless someone is able to save us and save us from ourselves. The angel told Mary in Matthew 1, 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What you and I and all the world need saved from today is our low-down, wicked, ungodly, unholy, unrepentant sins. We are sinners. We're born with that nature. We've got that nature. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says over in Romans 6, 20, that the wages of sin is death. So we need someone to save us from that death because of sin. And the Bible then says in Revelation chapter 20 that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. I don't want to go there. I don't want to hang out there. I don't want to be there. I need a Savior. You need a Savior. You say, well, how did that all come about? Well, it started with Adam. Adam disobeyed God. The Lord told Adam and Eve of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But the tree that is in the midst of the garden thou mayest not eat. For in the day that ye thereof ye shall surely die. Well, they ate it anyway. A lot of us do things anyway, even though we know that it's a sin against God. And and that's how it all started, disobeying God. Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Adam's sin passed on to all his descendants, all his descendants. All, all those to follow him, that sin passed on. Adam and Eve sinned. Added, Adam needed a savior. His spiritual life died. We know his body didn't die because he lived another 800 years. We know his soul didn't die because the Bible says, What shall a man profit if he gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What died was his spiritual life, that spiritual image of God. He lost. And, and every man from Adam and says after that, Adam begat sons and daughters after his likeness and after his image, no longer in the image of God. And a live body, a live soul, but a dead spirit. That's why the Lord told Nicodemus, she must be born again. Jesus Christ. No one from Adam to Jesus Christ on this earth had the image of God until Jesus Christ showed up. He's referred to as the second Adam. He's a quickening spirit. Quickening means to make alive again. That's what Jesus Christ does. 
and Adam and Eve sin. You know what Adam and Eve needed? They needed a Savior. They needed a blood sacrifice to be made to cover their sins. Isn't that right? It says in Genesis 3.21, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. You know what that coat of skin represented? It represented that something had to die to get that skin. There was a blood sacrifice. Now their sins were covered, but they would not be paid for until on a lonely hill called Calvary, Jesus Christ would come and finally pay that sin debt. All the descendants or or, uh, predecessors of Adam live with that uh, live body, live soul, but a dead spirit. A body with a tendency to sin, a propensity to sin, a very nature that is contrary to God. Adam and Eve needed a Savior. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. David, he was called a man after God's own heart, yet David needed a Savior. 2 Samuel 12, 13, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. My, my, my. David said he brought me up out of a horrible pit. And set me on a rock. David knew. David knew he needed a savior. Uh, How about Job? Job who called God. God called Job a just man. Who uh, uh, did good. Eschewed evil. Did Job need need a savior? Job said in Job 7.20. I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee? O thou preserver of men. Job needed a savior. In Job 33, 22, he said, Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. He needed saved. Job 33, 24, Then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. That ransom is in the payment Jesus Christ made for you on Calvary's cross. Made for me. Made for David. Made for Job. Made for Adam and Eve. Job said about a repentant sinner, he said, He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. That's what I need. I need God's righteousness, because all of man's righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. I couldn't get to heaven in my own righteousness. God is not impressed with my righteousness. Matthew 20, 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. You need to learn about the Savior and learn about yourself and know that without a Savior, you don't don't have a chance, folks. This world is without hope. Without God in this world, they need a Savior. Uh, The Bible says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He shall deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. I need a Savior. You need a Savior. Adam needed a Savior. David needed a Savior. Job needed a Savior. Even the great prophet Isaiah needed a Savior. Isaiah said in Isaiah 6, 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isaiah understood it, the greatest prophet perhaps that ever lived, knew that he needed a Savior. He knew he needed saved from his sins. How about the apostle Peter? Did he need a Savior? Luke 5, 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord, he knew his life was a life of sin. How about Paul? All these great men of the Bible were sinners. Paul said in Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Another place he said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Adam needed a Savior. David needed a Savior. Job needed a Savior. Isaiah needed a Savior. The Apostle Paul needed a Savior. Apostle Peter needed a Savior. How how about Titus? Remember Titus? He said in Titus 3, 3, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, 
disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Oh, but then he says, but after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, said not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brother Phil talked about this in Sunday school. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. They've all gone out of the way. We've all become as an unclean thing. That's our light in life. That's why we need a Savior. Every human being uh, ever born of woman has de develops over the years with that sinful nature. Each one develops a, their own little secret life. A little secret life where the, your very thoughts, you know that you've sinned. You realize that you're not as good as a lot of folks think you are. What was it that Spurgeon said when men talk about, uh, say, uh, bad things against you? said, leave it alone because you yourself know that you are worse than what they say you are. They need a Savior. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. A fellow said, well, hold on, preacher. Well, how about the Blessed Virgin Mary? That's a good question. Uh, when the angel appeared said uh, to Mary, said, Thou art highly favored. Uh, the Lord is with thee. Uh, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. The Virgin Mary, highly favored, and blessed, of, uh, young, blessed among women. But watch it. But Mary, just as those who were godly before her, knew and professed that she also needed a Savior. Let's say, well, where do you get that, preacher? Well, turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke 1 and verse 46. Uh, Mary says this, And Mary said in Luke 1, 46, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Watch it. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Amen. Mary needed a Savior. My, 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 the Apostle Paul would write to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mary rejoiced in her Savior. Adam needed a Savior. David needed a Savior. Job needed a Savior. Isaiah needed a Savior. The Apostle Peter needed a Savior. The Virgin Mary needed a Savior. Paul needed a Savior. Titus needed a Savior. The Virgin Mary, highly favored, rejoiced in her Savior. Mother Teresa needed a Savior. From the greatest to the least, every human being, all, have come short of the glory of God. All of sin, from the greatest to least. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. It don't matter if you've got a million or you owe a million. It don't matter if you teach Sunday school or, or you're a $20 hooker on Vine Street in Cincinnati. You need to, you get to heaven the same way. Through a Savior. From the greatest to the least. Mary rejoiced in her Savior. Jesus Christ. How about that low down good for nothing thief on the cross. Condemned to death. How about that rascal. You remember what happened to that low down. Lying, thieving, murdering, no count. Thief on the cross. He cried out to Jesus and said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today 
shalt thou be with me in paradise. Man, you talk about a Savior. My, that's why Brother Barber sang about, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that not, but God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. My, my, my. From the greatest to the worst of mankind, he came to save. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Acts 17, but now commandeth, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. There has to be a come to yourself moment. Before you come to Jesus, you've got to come to yourself. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. You've got to come to yourself. Take a look at yourself. It's called repentance. When a man comes to himself like the prodigal son. Uh, when, it said when he came to himself. A lot of folks never get saved because they never come to themselves. They believe what people tell them about how good they are and how wonderful they are. But God uh, seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh upon the outward appearance. But God looketh upon the heart. Acts 20, 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't just be sorry for what, for, for, uh, what you are and just repent. Well, I'm sorry I got caught. I'm sorry I did. You, that repentance not needs to come. A re- repentance needs to be toward God. Not only did what you do offended you or maybe your family, but it also offended a holy God. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Savior. He's the mediator. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's the only one that can save you. You can't save yourself. Your Sunday school can't save you. Your high school uh, diploma can't save you. Only Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. At the name, it's at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is the Savior. He's the one. It's Him. Come to Jesus. Come to the Savior today. What are you waiting on? Why would somebody put that off? He said, I've heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. Adam needed a Savior. David needed a Savior. Job needed a Savior. Isaiah, uh, the Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, uh, Titus, the Virgin Mary. Blessed among women, highly favored, needed, and rejoiced in her Savior. The thief on the cross, that low-down, no-count thief, knew he needed a Savior. See, the problem is, is sometimes we're a little too churchy to ever see our need. It's either we'll find in our addictions program that more people get saved in the addictions programs and in the jail ministries than in church because those folks see their need. A lot of folks sit in that pew half their life and they think they're okay. Got to watch out for that. All these great people of God knew that they needed a Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior. 1 John 4, 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son, watch it, to be the Savior of the world. My, 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 my. Savior. You need saved from something. For the wages of sin is death. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. I don't want to go there. You don't have to go there. If you go to hell, it's not God's fault. 
because God provided a way. He said, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that faith is in God's provision for sin, Jesus Christ. He's the one. He said, besides me, there is no one else. No one else. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say, I'm one of the ways. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus Christ, you need to get this thing out of the way. You don't know that you're going to make it home today. You just don't know. We don't have that assurance. Why not get this thing out of the way and say, uh, Lord, I know I'm a mess. I know I'm a Savior. The Bible says that. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. I know that. We know that because of our sin, there's a penalty for the wages of sin is death. And then the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us. That's it's, it's in your direction. It's toward you. It's toward you today. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He accepts you for salvation just exactly like you are. Just like that thief on the cross. He, he just cried all he just cried out. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You need to get along with God and say, God, I know I'm a mess. And Lord, remember me. Remember me, Lord. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Why would he refuse you? He won't refuse you. Why would he? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. Won't you stand up this morning? If you're here today, you've never trusted Jesus Christ, it'd be a good time to get that out of the way. You say, well, how much faith does it, does it require? Just whatever measure of faith God gives you, you just step out on it. And then his faithfulness gets the job done. You say, why? Well, maybe I just got the faith of a grain of mustard seed. Then you step out on it, and then his faithfulness will move the mountain. He'll save you if you're willing to let him save you. Savior. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And he is the Savior. Won't you trust him today? The altar's open. For whatever reason, won't you come as we play? What, what page, Jeff? 281. 281. Page 281.